And here he is, the man of the hour. This is, of course, Duke Lope the Fourth, the clumsy of Bascon Yaku, our new character and a character that has been through a bit, at least. You know, I mean, hey, if you grow up with a father as he had him, then you're going to have some weird experiences in life, I think. It is an absolute train wreck what has occurred here in the duchy itself. Komsano, of course, is gone. Conde Anfos Arno Tess, who is actually your skull, so he is a Basque, while his father was Occitan, is now in control. And, well, we and him actually get together quite well. You know, we have a pretty good relationship. It is fairly neutral. And that is despite this hefty minus 49 bonus because he hated our father. The way I see it, from my side, it's morality. From his side, it's just maybe his fickleness, you know, being a bit fickle about it and saying, hey, this was my father's issue, this was your father's issue, we too, we can get along either way. With this great overhaul, as I would like to call it, of the duchy, with our wife Duquesa Catalina Gazzies of Basconiaco, who is honest, impatient and generous, she really compliments us, except for the impatient trait, that is where we're the direct opposite, but the rest we are basically fairly similar, I am patient, just and honest. You know, we have a very strong central landowner that we can trust, that we can believe in. Somebody pointed this out in the comments as well, that honestly these two might actually fall in love and become soulmates, it does seem quite fitting. And then last but not least we have Conde Lopez and Tulis of course, and he just, he's hanging out, he's having a good time. Um, there are two things that I want to bring up before we jump into this. The first thing is that I did mention in the comments that when the time is right, and that means I need to hold more land to actually make that happen, I will probably make a theocratic vessel. You have to use cheats for that, but I will probably make one, and we will do this to signify the influence, the power that without a doubt Kvalimir has gained over this duchy, as he was the advisor for my grandfather, for my father, and then a friend of mine and an advisor. Um, somebody commented, hey, listen, your character isn't really zealous, why are you doing that? Does that really make sense? And I see where you're coming from, but I really just want to stress that I'm not doing it because my uh, character wants to buy entry into heaven like this. No, I am doing it because Kvalimir has earned it, basically. Like, he has taken this power, there's just basically no game mechanic to represent this better. So we're definitely going to involve this right there. And um, the other thing that I would like to mention, somebody pointed out, hey, wait a minute, you paid homage, okay, things didn't go your way, it was embarrassing, but would you really say this is such a disgrace that I want to rebel from there? I see where you are coming from, I really do, and I think that I disagree mostly because of how homage was seen in a historical context in Paradox, and I noticed this as well when I played many, many games in the pre-release version, it is just pretty common to embarrass yourself during your paying homage, right? And that, historically, is absolutely incorrect. Um, let's take a quick look at Europe, right, as a whole. When we look at Europe, and when we look at France, let's start with France, for example, you can see all these small individual lords right here, right? These are the lords that are in the, the direct proximity of the king that have been granted by the Carolingians themselves directly. But when you look at the south, you have these big chunks of land held by Guyenne, for example, held by us in Basconiaco, and then held by Barcelona, which in the past had already been unified, you can see it right here. So this isn't new either, that there is a big Barcelona to lose sort of conglomeration down here. What does that mean? Why am I bringing it up? I am bringing it up because feudalism up here meant something significantly different from feudalism down here. These lords, as they existed, and similarly to how they existed in the Stammesherzogtümer, which is actually a, an innovation, if I'm not mistaken. Is that in early medieval? Oh yeah, that is. The Stammesherzogtum culture, that basically had created gigantic lords that ruled over cultural areas in general, and everybody agreed within those areas for a decentralized realm, and then on top of that was the king, the emperor, and so on. These sort of constellations over here have a completely different understanding of authority and who should rule than, for example, Lotharingia, which was the very core of everything Franconian uh, or Frankish, and with that saw a lot of authority. Now, what does all of that mean? This means that if I, a lord that has arisen from the actual natural hierarchy, from the natural organization on here in Basconiaco, if I am so humble that I come up to your capital and acknowledge that you are my king rather than just sending the taxes and not doing anything, you better respect it. In a historical context, paying homage was very important for both sides. Um, 
the most common example of how homage would be paid is basically the vassal kneels down, puts their hands together much like they were praying, and then the liege lord cups them, basically uh, embraces the hands of the vassal, signifying of course that the vassal serves, but also that the vassal is taken care of. And this is very important because this is a, a bit of a, uh, an approach that keeps the honor of both of the rulers intact. And honor and paying homage are tightly connected. If you disrespect me, you insult my honor and say that I do not deserve the respect of others. And that, whether you're arrogant, is a huge issue in the medieval period. There was actually in Italy in particular, but also all over Germany, for example, and of course we know the classic example of duels because of uh, honor insults and so on. There was a huge culture around defending your honor and it being mandatory. There were wars fought that the participants didn't really need to fight, but they knew that the societal expectation demanded it. And that is the way that I see Duke Lope IV. He looks at his king and says, you broke my oath when I swore it to you by embarrassing me, by disrespecting me, Roi Charles II the Bold. And that is very troublesome. Um, it doesn't mean that we will rebel very soon. It doesn't mean that I hold a personal grudge. I think Duke Lope IV is actually a rather respectful opponent if he were to go to war. But it does mean that it w I will bide my time and I will arrive at a solution for this. Whether it is rebellion, whether it is uh, just further, you know, devolving away from the French crown by, for example, changing our taxes, we will see. But that is my reasoning here, and in a medieval context, I do think it makes a lot of sense. Now, either way, internally, we are very much secure. Let's take a look. Uh, biographies, that's fine. I don't want to declare either of these wars. You expect a council position. Honestly, I don't know you. I don't care. We have uh, Jacques de Vascogne still here with his wife, of course, on our council. Now, what are we going to do? First of all, I agree, these people should be soulmates. They are the first couple that we have in this playthrough, and that is lovely to see. They are the first couple that happen to be compatible. Look at this. Honest likes just. Honest likes honest honest likes honest. I can't even talk. Your rank is higher, of course. Impatient, dislikes patient. That is our one flaw here. And then Duke Catalina's opi uh, opinion of me plus 50. We just like each other. And I will try to romance my wife. That is what you do, you know. Uh, I will try to maybe copy the Occitan culture that I do rule over because they do have chivalry and chanson de geste. This culture values the heroic deeds of long-gone ancestors. The romantic retelling of the lives of knights such as Guillaume or Roland will inspire generations to come. Maybe I want to be quite similar to them. I may not be Occitan, but I have ruled over them for years. The time has come to let my feelings towards Duquesa Catalina be known. I will sing a love ballad. Absolutely. I found a classic Yoskal love ballad which suits Catalina perfectly. I practice it over and over. Everything must be perfect. I find my sunshine walking in the Armagnac garden, surrounded by her friends. With my heart beating like a hammer, I kneel before her and sing. Catalina's cheeks turn a deep pomegranate red, but she does not interrupt me. Her companions all look pleased or jealous. Surely a good sign. You have a beautiful voice, my lord, Catalina says before she hurries off. Her friends are quick to follow. I stand up on shaking legs, watching them disappear between the hedges. My heart beating harder than ever. Catalina won't resist my charms for long. It does make me think that it isn't our land, but probably our duke spends a lot of time in Armagnac in the heart of his possessions. Now we're spending the time with our wife. That is quite nice. Now what I actually will also do, because I want to know whether this was a once sort of, you know, one-time occurrence here with Roi Charles embarrassing us, I will send Sibyl all the way over here to Ile de France and we will find out whether there are any secrets that I should indeed know about. But let it be known, right now I am plotting my resistance. The Duke of Basconiaco rules over the Basque people because that is our tradition, that is my right and that is my honor. I will not be insulted by somebody that already extorts our money. Um, oh, we have two children, Lope and Catalina. Wow, we are naming them after father and mother. I like that. That is that is kind of cute. Lope here, so they are twins. She's also actually a twin. Maybe it's going to be in the genetics going forward. Lope is right here and Catalina over there. And Catalina is uh, scaly. Catalina is covered in scaly patches of skin. Fertility goes down. Dread goes up. Attraction opinion, vassal opinion. Listen, kid, I love you. You are my child and I will be taking care of you. Absolutely. Uh, oh, and I will also, by the way. So I did check it. Uh, when you look at the acceptance here, obviously this was reset to zero. This was a bit of a gameplay issue. Don't worry about it too much. Again, we have time. We can let these cultures, you know, start to fuse over time. We, we got a lot of uh, playtime more to go, I think. But we aren't really having much influence here with the promoting acceptance. So instead, 
I will be sending Konda Anfos um, to collect some taxes. I, I think that is a good idea. Romans, glimmering gold. Sweet Lady Catalina, I sigh as I kneel before her. My only desire is to bring you honor and happiness. Pray, tell me, how can I pr uh, prove my love for you? Catalina gives me a long look. Lady Isabel's necklace is lovely, she says, and nods ahead in the direction of Condessa Isabella, the wife of Major Regico Nagusi Conde Lope. But it would look even better around my neck. Seriously? Hmm. Oh, I like that. I will obviously not steal it. That's ridiculous. Uh, if I am discovered, then Condessa Isabel and Conde Lope will lose opinion. We're not doing that, of course. I could compliment her quite simply. And you know what? I don't even have to give her a gift because ultimately I'm pretty sure we're at 100% indeed. Um, I will... Oh, I could owe her a favor. You know what, Isabel? Absolutely. I will owe you a favor. Uh, this just means to me what this means is that I have a positive relationship with Isabel and Condelope. They are supporting me as much as they can. I won't act against them. They have been good vessels. And Asna right here is a troublemaker. He's rowdy. Good to know. Um, I hope that he grows up to be just as honorable as I am. Hmm. Who knows what he will be studying when the time is right. I have uh, seen something and I might do that as well. Steinwallen, uh, an amazing German Let's Player that also does CK3. He basically just rolls the dice when it comes to the education focus of his children. Because obviously these are the obvious choices, but we should give our kids a bit more freedom. It will also change the perfection of the characters that we get. And I like that. So I feel like I might actually do that. You know, just uh, go ahead and roll it out once they are six. Anyway, Romans, the request. Lady Catalina, let me prove my devotion to you in any way you, de uh, you deem fit. Catalina ponders the request for a while before her face lights up. I have been plagued by nightmares lately. If you are truly devoted to me, you will stand guard outside my chambers and make sure no evil reaches me. So she was just pregnant. Maybe the nightmares are an effect of giving birth uh, or of having to take care of these children, although I'm sure that we have maids for this. I will protect you. Absolutely. You managed to stay awake. I did it. Look at that. Yeah, we, we already, like... This is going to be a lovely marriage. I can... I, I hope that our children take an example of this. And speaking of our children, you know what I love? I love our children. And I will be hiring a court tutor. Timo von Eberstein. He is uh, Bayerisch. Perfect. He is a uh, shrewd. I, I like this kid. Yeah, I like this guy. We have Ordono. He is a uh, Basque. But I like Timo von Eberstein. He could teach them German. He doesn't speak any other languages, actually. Mm, what exactly? Wait a minute. Uh, so this gives me opinion, right? Learn language scheme power, improves education outcomes, and unlocks the have child study language interaction. Um, basically, I think... So I could hire Timo, but roleplay-wise, it makes more sense to hire somebody like Ordono. He's already a court physician. He already has his foot in the door. So I will be hiring him. He is my culture. Now let me just check my child. Right, you can't learn a language yet, but once you're old enough, you can. And I will be learning Occitan. Oh, you're both French. See, I am interested in getting these peoples. We already have an alliance with Guyenne, and we might have an alliance with Barcelona going forward, but I am interested in keeping that going. His heir is also French. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go and uh, learn French then. And I'm going to learn this towards my ally. And again, we are already allied. You know what? So, he has become a better person. He's a flagellant. Now he is, of course, redeeming himself for his sins or for his earlier uh, transgressions, but Duke Bernard, you know what? I would like to get to know you, and for that I will try to learn your... Oh, right, once it's over, once the Roman thing is over, I will be learning the language of French based on Barcelona again. We could do it on Charles, but I hate that guy. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Are you kidding me? That guy will never see me again. Wait a minute, we, we uncovered a secret and it didn't tell me. Blanche is a non-believer. I mean, she's also Cathar, so yeah. Big surprise, huh? <laughs> Espionage bastard. Now this is something. While performing a duty, Sibyl has uncovered a secret held by Queenesse Ode of Amiens. So this is Pen Pernette Carling. She is the wife of Kuhn's Herbert, uh, who is uh, just slightly related to the Carlings. He's not from the main branch here. And there is a bastard here involved. Let me check this secret, actually. Ingelger d'Anjou is the likely father of Pernette Carling. Well, that is a secret, but it's not related to what we needed to find out at the very least. Romans, competition. Alcata Nagusi Alfonso, excuse me. As of late, all of my visits to Catalina have been ruined by Alfonso of Agenais. He followed her everywhere like a lost puppy. His attempts to charm the lady are laughable, yet I fear his persistence will be rewarded. A duel will prove who is worthy, my god. It's a 50-50 chance. Um, I'm, you know what? 
coin. I, I don't wanna... This is the way, okay? May I get injured? Possibly. But am I somebody that respects fighting, that desires to fight? I think so. A duel will prove who is worthy. Um, let's just check that out. Alcata Nagusi Alfonso stood no chance against my might. His defeat was surely embarrassing. And my beloved Catalina saw all of it. She has not paid him any attention since. Catalina, <laughs> we're already married, but still, all right. I might be rising up into the status of one of the legendary knights, right? This is definitely, and this is something that I actually like. So we don't speak the language of the Occitan population, so the Languedoc. We don't speak uh, the Provencal language. And we're not even learning it. We, we are not going to learn it. But what I will say is... We're looking at a situation where we are, personally, as a character, at least somewhat adopting to the principles of this culture. Chivalry, chanson de geste, right? We're trying to live this life. Maybe this is the beginning of, in a couple generations, you know, a bit of a hybrid culture there. Putting together what belongs together. Holland, right? You are independent. Yeah, Lotharingia has fallen apart a bit at the very least, but generally they're holding. Englerland has been strengthened. I really like that. Alfred is in a pretty good position, and yet he is still stronger. Uh, he's supporting Eva the Boneless. This is for a county, is this true? Yeah, it's just for a county, so that doesn't really matter. Romans, declaration of love for you, Sibyl. As I push aside the sheets to lay down, I find a little scroll resting on my bolster. Someone has entered my chambers unnoticed. A chill runs down my spine as I carefully unroll the thick parchment. My graceful paragon, lord of my heart, I can keep my feelings secret no longer. From this day on, I will do everything in my power to prove my loyal affections. We'll see each other soon. Until then, dream of me lo and my love. Eternally yours, Sibyl. You need to stop this. Sibyl, I understand why you would be attracted to a man of my stature, to a man of uh, my position. And by the way, I noticed that our nose is quite unique. Maybe that is a, a family uh, heirloom going forward. But Sibyl, this is not, this is not kosher. This is not fine, okay? You need to stop that. Espionage lovers while performing her duties, right? She has secretly taken English. We already knew that. He he already birthed uh, a child at the very least, maybe even more than one child. But yeah, okay, we we knew that. Come on, there has to be something worthwhile in the court of Rashals the Bold. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> I can see that. There's a lot currently going down in the court. Still a sixty percent chance of learning a secret. Quite nice. I like that everybody else is sort of a uh, quite calm. And I say that as the peasants in Carcassonne. Oh, right, we did threaten merchants as our previous character, so they do not have a positive opinion of us. I hope they can calm down in time. Wait, what is happening here? Marquis is attacking Princip Israq of the Salamid Principado. What are you getting? Lieda. I like that. That's a good move. That is a strong move to defend the borders, to really honor the promise of being a march. You know, speaking of which... Let me check this, actually. Could I theoretically? We got some people that have claims on these. Garcia on a Queste Aragon. Unwilling to come to my court, though. He is still allied to France because he's marrying... Wait, why are you allied to France? I think he made that alliance before he was disposed. Right, then we have you. You're definitely not coming to my court because you are in Holland and you have chosen a church career. Okay, fair enough. But if I could put him back onto the county... We would have a position here in the south that would guarantee our transport, you know, via Pamplona here in Navarra. Can I even percentage-wise, can I even get Garcia on a cast? If I became his friend, I think I could probably get him to join my code. We're going to consider that as well. I would like to learn a language, I would like to romance, I would like to do so many things. The Regretful Butcher. I was visiting the local market when I overheard two locals chatting animatedly. You're giving up your trade, exclaims the woman, but you are one of the best butchers here. I turn around and see a man, a former butcher apparently, shaking his head. I can't do it anymore, he croaks, stroking his beard with a sorrowful expression. After that nightmare, every time I look into the fearful eyes of a creature I could kill. No, I'll settle all my affairs, then dedicate the rest of my life to being a wandering priest to repent and teach our brothers and sisters, the animals, uh, that animals, the blessed teachings of God, right, animals and their souls was a big topic in Christianity. These are animals, my friend, the woman scoffs. Don't be an idiot. We can't lose you. I need to eat good meat. Mm, I could ignore it. I mean, I'm not exactly a, a zealous person. Support him. Tell her she should respect his pious wish or support, uh, support, support him or support her. Berate him for being a sentimental fool. You know what? I don't think I have a strong opinion on this. I, I just have to tell you, I could gain some prestige, but I think my character does not mind either way. He admires somebody following his heart, but at the same time he doesn't really agree with the arguments, mate. He frankly doesn't care. 
And right, here we go. I see it. Uh, I must see Duquesa Catalina's face. The sight of Catalina's chambers window makes my heart stutter. So close, uh, close and yet so far. But wait, who is that? Cl climbing up the tower? The shady figure stops by Catalina's window and unlatches the shutters. My beauty is in danger. I must save her. I absolutely must save her. Yes, there is no doubt about this. The sounds from the struggle above is the greatest motivator I have ever known. Without care for life or limb, I hoist myself through Duquesa Catalina's window. The scene that meets me is not what I expected. Overturned furniture, shredded curtains, and Catalina standing over an unmoving body with a bloody dagger in her hand. I do wonder who sent this attack. Could it have been one of the angry peasants in Carcassonne? Could it have been the king? Why would he do it? To kidnap her so that he would have a token when it comes to negotiating with me? Uncertain, but I will never let you get into harm's way again. Thank God you're here, Lope. Indeed. We have become soulmates. I love it. Just absolutely wonderful. We are um, allied to both of these, of course, to my wife. Uh, Garcia Onekes, where are you? Oh, he is in, uh, in England. He's at the court of uh, our beloved Alfred. You know what I'm thinking? I am thinking I will learn the language of the man that is currently doing God's work, Marquise Bernard. That is the next scheme that we will attempt here. We do have our actual, uh, there he is, Ordono, court tutor. He's making a lot of money. <laughs> He's making a good amount of money for sure. Uh, this faction will still start. That is fine. Tell me, how is this fella here? 14. Soon I will be handing Lapodi over and I will be doing it. His family has done so much for us, indeed. Um, I hope that she can find something on the king himself. That would be wonderful. What did she find? Estefania's child's heritage. Estefania. You are the wife of Duke Ramnulf. Wait a minute. Oh, you're not the wife. You just had a child. Oh, that is who he fornicated with. Anfos. Right. Uh, could I theoretically... Could I blackmail you with this? Oh yeah, I totally could. It would be a weak hook, doesn't really do me any favors. Listen, I don't want to blackmail. This is not a blackmail character, but sometimes you can have something uh, that goes together. For example, if I aid him in a war, I could say I also know your secret. Just know it is safe with me. But the game would translate this into me, you know, blackmailing him. I hope that you understand what it would be roleplay-wise. Um, I can't believe that Charles the Bold is still alive. His condition is poor, but oh, he went down the lifestyle. Yeah, okay, he went down the medicine and uh, medicine focus. That makes a lot of sense. What else in the world is going on? The Abbasids are holding together, as they should. Um, Kazaria, still under Arpad rule. My god. Holy moly. Are they actually converting people? I see a bunch of Taltusists in there. Yeah, they are converting people. Espionage murder. While performing her duties as my chamberlain, Sibyl has uncovered a secret held by my uh, liege Roi Charles. He had Margot killed a fornicator. Who did she fornicate with? With him? Could that be true? Not only cruel and heartless, but dishonorable as well. Mm hmm. Roi Charles II, the bold. See, we could expose this secret. I am honest and just, and I assume this gives me stress. Yeah, it gives me some stress here. And it is only a weak hook. How is this a weak hook? He murdered someone, my god. Um, I think I'm going to keep this secret right now. There has to be, maybe we can find more. Do we still have a chance of finding something? 60%, all right. My mortal body, oh no. You know more than what is necessary. Reduced disease symptoms, very good. What did he do? The bloodletting, ugh, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Truly disgusting. But now we know. Charles the Bold is a murderer. And I I wonder, I wonder, why did he kill her? Did he kill her because, uh, you think Carloman was involved? Could this have been one of Carloman's, uh, Carloman's affairs? You think it was his own affair? Who is that child? Who is that child indeed? Hmm. If I were to invite this child into my court, oh, I can't do it. You are an Ansbach. Um... See, I was thinking, I could probably find out her secret, right? It's kind of interesting. Um, I will, I know that we're focusing on strategy, and now I'm looking at this. I think I will go down envelopment, and I will change to chivalry as soon as I can, basically. That's how I'm going to play this. We could petition our liege, but 
Ultimately, what am I petitioning this coward for? A uh, royal visit? Absolutely not. No, none of these are worthwhile. The king should never set foot in Basconiaco ever again. How's Barcelona's war going? Quite well. I like it. Uh, and, oh, well, I, I will crush you. Sorry, but you're my subjects. My father may have mistreated you. I never did anything to you. And now you will teach or you will be taught a lesson. Espionage. Unbeliever. Antoinette. Not that she plays any significant role. Yeah, we are not finding uh, any of the secrets that may be aiding me here. I was hoping for a strong hook on Charles the Se uh, Charles uh, the Bold, maybe. But no such luck, and we've won. We have, of course, completely defeated them. The locals have been pacified. Now let me ask you, can I simply... Yeah, exactly. I need to uh, reinforce my, my grip over Carcassonne. That shouldn't be too much to do, though. Um, you are 15. Very soon. Ooh, and my wife is pregnant again. Very nice. I'm no longer ill. Things are looking up. This is honestly so far we have a a picture book sort of marriage, a picture book rule. We have been quite good. Now let me check this. Uh, faction has disbanded, of course. You are under attack. Gwen's Gauspert, right, against the tyranny. Are you going to be winning that? Yes, easily as well. Um, my acquaintance Lothair has died. And with that, since he didn't hold enough of Frisia to have this kingdom be created. We have a unified Lotharingia under Ord, who is married to House. <laughs> wow. She is married to... Uh... Wait a minute. Robert the Strong. Where's uh, where's my dear friend? There he is. Yeah, he, she is married to the brother of Duke Ord. And that might result in an insanely powerful, insanely powerful alliance between Ord of Anjou and... Lotharingia. Um, very interested in seeing that, although I'm not certain that Lotharingia would kick out one of theirs when it comes to family. Oh, and you're calling me in. Um, of course. No, I, I will I will aid you. We we are allies, we are friends, and I will support you, although I will actually march on my own because I'm commanding this army. You know what? I seek the battlefield. I will show the glory, both for my wife and my vassals, that I deserve to be a ruler. Espionage murder. Ramnulf? My ally? Eble de Poitou. He killed one of his family members. You know what? I, I would like to, first of all. Okay, so I know of your murder secret now, and that is pretty... What sort of hook is this? Oh, it's a strong hook. Why is it only a weak hook? Oh, because that was not his family. He killed somebody that wasn't his family, whereas Du Ramnulf killed somebody from his family, and that's a strong hook. Um, let me just take a look here, right? I would like to... Look at the person that... Oh, we have a prisoner, right? That is the... Uh, yeah, these are weak hooks, strong hooks. My god, Paris is a city of sin. <laughs> An absolute city of sin. A uh, Blade Poitou. Whose son are you? I, seriously, I need to find out who this actually is. Give me a moment. Ah, he was his uncle. I think he must have had his uncle killed to stop any sort of rebellion. It is a brutal matter, a truly brutal matter. But his uncle was a terrible man. I don't know the internal machinations here. I do know that trusting Duke Ramnulf III is basically out of the window. I think we, we might be able to use him. I think he has repented. But I don't think this is a man that I would like to trust. On the other hand, uh, it makes a lot more sense now that we are definitely like trying to converse with Marquis Bernard II. He's not the best man, but... He's no murderer, at least as far as I know, and that is pretty good. That that is a uh, that is the best I can get here. I think uh, in these circumstances, look at that. We are indeed winning the battle. We caught them in time. The allies come in late, you know, but that is our battle. We just succeeded in this. Uh, did we get anything here? I don't even. I don't think we got anything here. Anyway, um, let's take a look at this. We killed Odwin, uh, Odoin, I guess, and we got some wounded people. Engelbert, Ordono. Ah, Ordono. Please heal yourself, my court physician. I I need you. <laughs> right, let's continue winning here. I'm going to siege down their capital. Oh, and we have another daughter. Oda Adele. Look at that. May you grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. Absolutely. We have plenty of children. A big family for my big heart. <laughs> oh, what? First of all, Bernardites. Thomas Bernard of Telosa, our former liege lord, if I'm not mistaken. Or at the very least, well... The son of that former liege lord. Then we have Jacques. He perished because of his wounds. Sibyl, I am so sorry. And Jacques Jacques, you will get your county in the next 
episode, because I think... Ooh, my ghost child... Wait a minute, now this is interesting. We were talking about this earlier. Margot, right? Um, illegitimate child of Pepin and Margot. Well, there you go. There you go. This is Pepin's child, Auger de Cognac. Interesting. Very interesting. Man, we have so many secrets, and this is just the normal work that Sibyl has done. Sibyl, more than anybody, has earned her son this title. Quite frankly, that's just the way it is. It is incredible just how much she has achieved for us here. I'm not somebody that is, uh, you know, intrigue-minded, but, I mean, at all, but my spy master was. So that is quite positive. Now, I need to ask you, my dear counselors, I think I know what Qualimir would say. <laughs> I think we all know what Qualimir would, uh, would say, but I must ask you. Do we utilize the strong hook that we have on Ramnulf to say... We're not friends, but we can have an enemy in this person. Oh, you wouldn't. Wow. Navara. And Nico the second for Tunis now stands against us. These are delicate times. Uh, tell me what you think, whether we should go for independence, whether I should just use the strong, uh, strong hook to change my contract. These are difficult times, because ultimately, Navara seems to be on the side of the king. Hmm. Let me know how you think Duke Lope here would proceed, and I will see you later. Alligator.